so many of my youtube friends have lovingly asked me to make a video on forward contracts so i said let's make a video on forward contracts and also explain the difference between outright forward and ndf over here we are not going to be discussing about the calculations regarding how uh, forward prices are uh, arrived at what we'll be discussing are just the mechanics of how the operations and the settlement takes place uh, our forward contract as we've already studied is a derivative product like a deriv like all derivative products its price is derived from the price of the underlying asset implying that there is an underlying asset and then there is a derivative contract the most common underlying assets are for uh, forward contracts are uh, foreign exchange and commodities and then they have derivatives so you have a usd inr in the spot market you have a usd inr in the forward market you have a usd jpy in the forward market you have a usd jpy obviously in the spot market so a forward contract is traded in the OTC market. That's the over-the-counter market where the market is largely used for providing customized and extremely well-designed structured products for both the counterparties. Since it's not traded on an exchange, almost all forward contracts are settled through central clearing counterparty. More about central clearing counterparty will be discussed in another video. The price is locked in today for delivery that takes place sometime in the future. So the only difference between a forward contract and a futures contract is a forward contract is OTC in nature, whereas a futures contract is traded on the exchange. This price lock-in enables both the counterparties to minimize market risk. What is market risk? Market risk is the risk that the price of the asset moves in a direction that is contrary to your trading position. So if the trading position of the bank is to is a long position in USD JPY, then the prices start falling, the bank loses money on that trading position. That is called as market risk. So market risk is the risk that the prices move against the trading position thereby banks incur a loss on that trading position. Let's go straight away into an example because there's no better way to learn finance, markets, structured products, etc. except with examples. And let's go back to our favorite hedge fund, Hari Hedge Fund. Now, Hari Hedge Fund is a US-based fund. So basically it has... Hari Hedge Fund has invested in Japanese corporate bonds. So now Hari Hedge Fund has got all dollars that it has collected from all the accredited investors. It makes an investment in Japanese corporate bonds which are denominated in which currency? In JPY. So Hari Hedge Fund has to convert the USD into JPY and makes the investment in JPY on Japanese corporate bonds. Is this clear? So even though Hari Hedge Fund has got dollars, they don't directly invest the dollars into the Japanese corporate bonds. They convert the USD into JPY and then make the investment in the Japanese corporate bonds. Now, what happens three years later? Let's see on redemption. The Japanese corporate corporation redeems the bonds. So the Japanese corporation is going to return back the investment made by Hari Hedge Fund. But in which currency is it going to make back the, uh, the investment? It's going to return the investment back in JPY because that's the investment it's got in, right? It's got investment into its bonds in JPY. It's obviously going to return back the JPY. And Hari Hedge Fund is going to receive JPY. This basically implies that Hari Hedge Fund is exposed to FX risk. Foreign exchange risk, also called as FX risk, is the risk that the currency moves against the trading position. This will occur three years hence, but when is it known? It is known right away. What can the hedge fund do? Is there any product that the hedge fund can use in order to lock in the price at which it's going to protect itself against foreign currency risk? So Hari Hedge Fund wants to minimize this currency risk on the settlement date, which is going to happen three years hence. But when is it known? It is known today. And therefore, Hari Hedge Fund decides to buy a USD JPY forward contract. 
So a USD JPY forward contract has got two currency two currencies USD and JPY, and it's with Citibank, which is a which is a large FX dealer in the international markets, to lock in the price at which the currency is going to get converted. What is an outright forward? An outright forward is when Hari Hedge Fund has bought this USD JPY at let's say a currency conversion of 150 for a settlement that takes place three years hence. Okay, so Hari Hedge Fund has bought USD and sold JPY. Citibank has sold USD and bought JPY. Okay, when are they doing this trade? They're locking in the price today for something that's going to happen three years hence. Okay, but what would happen if on the settlement date, the USD JPY rate is 160 or the USD JPY rate is 140. Come what may, because the contracted rate is 150, the conversion will take place only at 150. Okay, this is known as an outright forward, wherein there is a commitment by both the counterparties to convert at a particular currency exchange rate and that's exactly what's going to happen irrespective of whether the rate is 160 or 140 the conversion is going to take place only at 150 because that's a contracted rate this is the case of outright forwards now what happens in a non-deliverable forward in a non-deliverable forward we are not exchanging currency for currency okay that's why it's called as non-deliverable non-deliverable means you're not going to deliver the underlying asset so derivative means the price of the uh, derivative is derived from the price of the underlying asset. But in a non-deliverable derivative, you're not going to deliver the underlying asset. So what happens? All of them are cash settled. Okay. Hari Hedge Fund has bought USD JPY at 150 from Citibank, as was discussed a couple of slides earlier. And on the settlement date, the USD JPY rate is 140. So who has incurred a profit and who has incurred a loss? Let's look at it. The contracted rate is 150, right? That means Hari Hedge Fund has bought dollars at 150. But today, the price of that USD JPY is 140, three years hence. So Hari Hedge Fund has incurred a loss, right? Are we clear on this? So Hari Hedge Fund has incurred a loss. This loss is paid by the fund to Citibank, that is the counterparty to the trade. Let's repeat, the contracted rate of USD JPY is 150. On settlement date, the rate is 140. Hari Hedge Fund had agreed to buy USD JPY at 150. It is now having to sell at 140. That means Hari Hedge Fund has made a loss, Citibank has made a profit, and Hari Hedge Fund has to pay that loss to Citibank. There is no exchange of the underlying assets. Just the loss amount in USD is paid by Hari Hedge Fund to Citibank. If on the other hand, on settlement date, the USD JPY rate is 160, that means Citibank has sold USD JPY at 150. But now on settlement date, the price is 160. So for Citibank, it's a loss, right? So Citibank now has to pay that loss to Hari Hedge Fund. There is no exchange of the underlying asset. The losses and profits are cash settled between the two counterparties to the, out, to the NDF or the non-deliverable forward. So outright forwards are physically settled. Physical settlement is there is an exchange of asset for asset. In NDF, they are cash settled. That means there is no exchange of asset for asset. Only profits and losses are settled between each other. Thank you so much.